Thank you for joining us. When, uh, when did you arrive in Australia? Yesterday morning. How have you enjoyed uh, yourself so far? Yesterday was great. It was sunny. I went down to Circular Quay, had a look at the Opera House, and felt like a tourist. I meant to be here for work. Well, welcome. I hope you enjoy your stay. It's my first time here, so I'm really enjoying it. Glad to hear it. Can, uh, can you tell us a little bit about how you got started in, uh, in anime? Uh, ever since I was a child, I liked drawing and I liked animation. Um, I went to university, I went to an art university where I studied well painting, and after I graduated, I decided I wanted to make a living by drawing things and getting paid for it, so I joined an animation firm. And in 2011, you opened your own studio. What, uh, what prompted you to, uh, to make that decision? Mm. Uh, what I wanted to do was create a, a company that specialized in theatrical release animations, specifically. Your current movie is uh, Wolf Children. Can you tell us uh, about that film? Hi. Uh, it's a movie um, about young woman who marries a wolf man and has children by the wolf man and raises the wolf man children. It's that kind of thing. <laughs> Sounds very imaginative and, uh, and entertaining. So I was talking to a young mom about uh, raising children because I wanted to make a film about raising children. She said raising little children is like having a monster or a a wild animal in your house. I thought, well, you know, well, it might be interesting to actually depict that where you're raising a wild animal in your house. So you check so the color of the film. The contrast um, of city and country, wolf and human, is quite prevalent, as well as the theme of hope. What was uh, what was the message that you were uh, conveying that you were hoping to convey in in Wolf Children? Hmm. Ah, so, a lot of people discuss our life in terms of civilization versus nature, or the city versus the country, or these kinds of um, dialectical oppositions. Um, but when I looked at it, I thought, well, maybe children have the potential for both these things for towards the wilderness as well as a civilized life and they make their own choices as to which way they go so I thought that would be something I wanted to explore in this film. How, does, how do those sorts of themes compare to your work in movies like Summer Wars and uh, The Girl Who Leapt Through Time? So in Summer Wars it was cyberpunk but it was also set in rural Japan, so you have that contrast already. Um, a lot of these things that people set up as diametrically opposed to one another, therefore contrasting, I, I feel like I'm looking for an answer that's somewhere in between these sorts of things. Uh, can you tell us a little about your longtime collaborator, Yuchiro Saito? Mm. <laughs> That's Saito-san over there. <laughs> he's, recently, he's recently become a father and he seems to be very happy for us. Saito Yuichiro-san is a director of the studio Chizu. We so Yuichiro Saito is at once my partner and my CEO in the company that we've set up to make animations. He's an excellent human being. I'd like to say this because he's here. <laughs> <laughs> Listening to everything. When it comes to the animation style in your films, is there a particular aesthetic that you that you aim for? So when you make animations, you draw frame by frame. So every frame you draw uh, is a reflection of the aesthetic of the artist. It, it doesn't quite work out the same way as if you take a landscape shot and it's beautiful. It, 
it is the direct reflection of having any kind of aesthetic. So when the film is made, your aesthetic is in there. It, you can't help it. Um, that's the nature of animation. You can't do this without having a sense of your own aesthetic anyway. So unlike live action films where there are accidents that happen on set that end up on the film, there are no accidents in animation. Everything that happens, happens because of someone's aesthetic operating. Um, it happens inevitably and you have all these inevitables that pile up and in the end you have the animation. Why do you think Japanese animation is popular outside of Japan? It's, I mean, you're here in Australia, it's very popular here. Um, why, why do you think it, that it resonates with, with people so much? Um, the world of animation is really big and you look at it um, in a global sense, you know, the way people make images move, it, it actually draws a lot of uh, influence from the history of art itself. So if you look at cinema, animation takes up some kind of little corner, but in reality, because we draw these things, animation is in a sense an extension of the tradition of Western art, and to it comes all this other um, influences of art around the world, which is to say that is not an answer at all to your question, because <laughs> I can't tell you why Japanese anime in particular breaks out to the world. But animation it seems to be a crystallization of the process of art that happens to move. Um, thank you very much for your time and enjoy the rest of your stay in Australia.